on it. Rev, preach that word. And so we thank God for it. We started a series called Tools for Triumph. Tools for Triumph. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and let's look at verse 14. Hallelujah. For his word, his word, his spirit, his life, and his health to all of our flesh. Yes, indeed. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe it's verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, mm -hmm. which always causes us to triumph Thank in you, Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that was just, didn't anybody say nothing on that? That's a joy right there. Say that again for us, Don. Now thanks be unto God, mm -hmm. which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Yeah. God always causes us to triumph. Amen. And so we want to make sure that we uh, are walking in the joy of God. I think it's the message translation that says God will carry us through like an ongoing parade, mm -hmm. like we'll be trophies for him. Yeah. So God wants us to win in life. Amen. Not win just for winning's sake, but because when we are doing better, when we are walking according to his word, we can be walking, talking billboards. Yes. When you go through hell and high water and you got joy in your soul, when I tell you that's a testimony. Amen. Thank God for the nine of y'all that responded. Amen. I said that's a testimony. Amen. Okay. And so we want to make sure, though, that we get to the place where we're utilizing the tools that God has given us to walk in victory. Because I don't believe it's intended by God for us to hit a rough patch in life and go to pieces. Right. That is, there's a problem there. Amen. There's a problem when, you know, stuff happens and then we just have meltdowns. Yeah. Because here's the bottom line. Life has trouble built into it. Yeah. Yeah. The only way to not have any trouble is to go on and be with the Lord. That's right. And you're going to have to wait on his timing for that. Appreciate that one clap. So, we want to make sure that we look at the tools that God has given us. And so, Pastor Hutchins preached that thing out on Sunday as he reminded us to not panic. Yeah. All right? That you need to take inventory. Yeah. That you need to make camp. Make sure you're connected where you should be connected. Mm -hmm. And then that you get a plan to get out. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I want to, I, my job then, as Rev dealt with the uh, uh, attitude, what was it? Assessment stage. Assessment stage and uh, getting your head together. I'm actually looking at some of the actual actions, the, the resources at our disposal. Okay, it's very important. When I was talking with Rev on that Saturday, mm -hmm. I had to add, we, 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 sometimes because we, okay. we are both teachers, I tend to be more of a revelatory teacher, we sometimes miss each other in our conversation. So I said to him, how would you preach this lesson with no words? I said, because sometimes you can get to um, a, a good way of explaining something if you move away from any words at all. So what I did is I imagined, I told her, I carried him through this, I said, imagine you get dropped down in a room, snakes or something behind you, and you don't seem to see any, any openings. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And sometimes life can look that daunting. Sometimes life can look that intimidating. Boy, I didn't think I was going to have to work like this. What's wrong? Sometimes life can look like that. Can seem like there's so much stuff behind you, going on around you, and you don't seem to see a way. So I asked him that, and we began to talk about, well, the first thing, you don't want to panic. And so we start talking and talking, and we went on through his, went through his uh, lesson. I said, but now, Rev, at the end of the day, I'm calm with a plan, but a tool is something I use in my plan. What, what, comes, what is the action after the assessment? So we want to go from cerebral, just the assessment stage, to let's look at some tools. All right, so the first tool that I'm going to deal with today, I'm going to deal with one today, and then I'm going to try to hit the other two on Sunday. Ooh, that's going to be good. All right, so my tool today is the tool of revelation. Amen. All right, yeah, revelation, all right? And what we're talking about is two, pl two primary places for it is the Holy Spirit, the relationship we share with him, and then the vessel that God chooses. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The vessel God chooses. In fact, Aim, go get that pink 
note slip off my desk right in the center. All right, so what is revelation? Here's an old definition. Let's see where you are with it. Revelation is the truth. Just listen to it first. The truth or the perspective of God on my situation. Okay, I need to know what God has to say about my what? Situation. Truth or perspective of God on my situation at the level of my understanding. You see what I said? That's the aha moment. Got it. That moment right there. That's on the level of my understanding. And why does God want to do that? Why, why do we need revelation? I want to know what God is thinking and seeing about my situation. I need him to explain it to me on a level I understand. Come on, talk to me. So I can embrace it with my heart, assimilate it into my thoughts, and apply it to my decision making. Okay, so here it is again. What is, what is revelation? Yeah, you, some people who don't like to write, you're going to just write aha moment. <laughs> but for my folk that like the, yes, I had, see, I had all these good notes. You can't leave them notes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, but for everybody else, it's the truth or the perspective of God on my situation, on the level of my understanding. Why? So I can embrace it with my heart. I got to embrace it. And I'll, I'll explain just a little bit. I want to assimilate it into my thoughts because once God, in other words, Rev used the example, if the snake, you pick up a snake and it bites you, you don't just need to be bit that one time. You need to learn something from that experience and assimilate what you learned into your ongoing thinking pattern. Yes. What do I mean by that? I need, you need to learn from what you go through Amen. so you won't keep going through the same thing. Assimilate it into your thoughts, right? Your thought pattern, and then apply it to your decision making. So here it is, fast. You're going to have to get the CD. You'll be able, well, not CD. People only get those. You can watch it again. So revelation is the truth of the perspective of God on my situation, on the level of my understanding. So I can embrace it with my heart. I can assimilate it into my thoughts, and I can apply it to my decision making. All right, we need revelation. And just before we do that, I thought that was my girlfriend right there. That's my buddy. Yeah, we thank God. Aunt Marie's back in the house. Yeah. Amen. Her daughter went home to be with the Lord, as y'all know, and so we're happy to have her back. Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. God, can you, if we will depend on the Spirit of God to give us revelation, we can get out of some of these rough situations that we're in. Yeah. You have to understand, revelation is a tool. Yes. Revelation is the tool to help you and I triumph. Because if I can get in a habit of listening to the Holy Spirit, whether he is working through the vessel of God or through the nudging that I've learned to listen to from my relationship with him, he'll keep me from unnecessary detours and derailments and deceptions which bring drama. See? So if I listen to him, now, I want to talk, the two primary places, I want to talk about the set man in your life. That ain't the husband, or, you know, that ain't your boyfriend you go see on second Thursdays. <laughs> Leave y'all alone. No, the, the, <laughs> the set man in your life is the pastoral voice to which God has assigned you. It's not a masculine or feminine term, Just, you know, move past that. It is the vessel that God has that gives you the word and the environment of ministry that enhances your life. But here's what I want you to understand. Most people don't maximize the set man in their life because they won't respect the person that God wants to use. Amen. Oh, God, I'm going to preach this thing. Give me Proverbs 20, verse 5. Proverbs 20, verse 5. See, God, how, how many have ever come in here, and whether it was me or uh, Pastor Trevor, somebody, uh, whoever was preaching, the elder Chris, somebody, and you, heard, you knew God was dealing directly with right where you were. See, if, if you learn to hear it appropriately, if you, watch this, if you don't have the right esteem and respect for your leader, you will hear what they say as an alternate perspective or suggestion and miss God talking to you. Yes. <laughs> now, ain't no mystery. I have issues just like everybody else. You got them. I ain't shame looking at you. 
don't play. But the, but the point is, has God ordained that voice in your life? And if you don't esteem it right, you will hear it as an alternate perspective or suggestion and miss God's answer to get you out. <laughs> Proverbs 20, verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. This thing, when God starts dealing with a man or woman of God, that thing is down in there deep. But look what happened. Look who can get it out. But a man of understanding will draw it out. I can tell just as good when I go places. And I, and I don't say this to, to uh, uh, I don't want you to think I'm throwing shade on you. But uh, people always pick, say, pass a great day when you go out of town. You just, well, you just go crazy. How do, you, how do you fix the plate of somebody who's real picky? You getting ready to cook for somebody? I don't, oh, ooh, I, what, what you season that with? Did you? And I don't eat red pepper. I only eat black pepper. And I only eat sea salt. I don't eat regular salt. How do you fix that plate? How, how do you approach that? You, you don't, you, you don't even, you don't even, look, y'all done got mad. What? It's just an example. Y'all sitting up there face twisted. No, you, when, what happens is, watch this, watch this. Or how do you approach somebody that always is, is full almost? When you get ready to fix a plate. See, many times, and it's not because you don't, you, you mean to do it, but you, you're so used to such a high level of food. She got it. You're so used to such a high level of food. till You're just like, okay, well, you know, pass, come on in. Pass. Oh, good, pass, Reverend Hutch. Do you realize who's standing up here when we both walk in here? Yes. See, I know you're not used to me talking like this, but I ain't scared to say it. You have to understand the level of anointing and gifting and grace that walks through that door. When we both have chairs up here, y'all are sitting up in front of something. But if you forget that, you will not draw out of us what's in us when I go play. <laughs> okay, give an example. Now, I, admittedly, I know, and don't be mad, I have not even taught surplus grace to my own church. That's so sad. I didn't need you to add that. <laughs> she said, you sure have it. Did you see? <sighs> but when I was away, these folk advertise pump this thing up every, every, I'd happen to scroll through their Facebook trying to see a picture of somebody. They were telling me, they had, to, they had declared it surplus week. They've been talking, they talked about it for a whole month. Watch this, we already sold 60 books before I got there. The anticipation. So by the time I get up, I got a bunch of folk like this here. Pastor and I already told him, oh my God, this woman, you know, he's going on and on because he's my brother. And I believe it was God's will that I preached it there first because he was the first one that gave voice to what it was. All right. Dr. Briggs. When I tell you, I felt like they were pulling on me. They pulled and pulled. And I mean, I would, God, just, 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 you have to be careful that you don't allow yourself because we're personable people, but don't allow yourself to become common with what God has called chosen because you will miss drawing out. And then when something is spoken, you'll just go, yeah, I know I should. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No, you don't want to do that. You will miss it, but a man of understanding will do what, Rev? Will draw it out of him. See, you have to understand something. Give me Acts 27. Let me show you something. Acts 27. As you turn to Acts 27, 9 through 11, you have to remember that God has called people to really preach this word. And then he sends them. Everybody preaching ain't sent. Now, I ain't mad at nobody. I love people. They're sweet. They're good natured. But they ain't been sent. Okay, there's a difference between so, and what sometimes folk that preach it can almost preach it better, but they're hirelings and they'll be gone before you blink. Y'all not going to talk to me. Y'all, let me tell you something. You can find some folk that can go out. You want to know why I buy my car? This is just me. You buy your car where you want to. I ain't mad at it. And trust me, it's just whatever you want to do. But you don't want to know why I buy my car at Walter Bolton's. 
I can buy a car anywhere. I don't need nobody to help me on the rate. But I do appreciate the fact that he take our black card. And then I think he got a week in September where he will double it and give you $1,000 off for being a member. Shonama. Yeah. But I, and I, now I, and I will take that. Now, don't think I won't take a discount. Thank you, Jesus. But that's not why I go. The reason I go is because if something happened to my car, I like the fact that he stays involved. You, you're not hearing what I'm saying. See, I can go get a car and then people act like they don't know me. No, I don't want that. I want if something happened. I, want, I ain't got to talk to him. I want to talk to somebody. And for them to say, no worries, we can, we can bring you another one over. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'll be, I be buying right on steady from here on. But that's, what, that's the same thing. You have hirelings and then you have shepherds. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. You have to understand. I tell them, Rev, well, on a good day, both of us can preach. But even on a bad day, we feed with understanding because we are true shepherds. But if you, don't, if you don't keep that in your mind, then you will get so casual with the level of revelation that you'll just go, oh, I think he did good. And we appreciate that. Everybody wants to feel like they've done well. But can I say it another way? Don't nobody care if you think we did well. Did you hear what God said? Nobody, man, when your man or woman of God walks up, you don't shout for nobody like you do your own because that is the person that's feeding you with knowledge and understanding. Good God, they ain't thinking. Oh, God, that's good. That's so good. See, and, and, and we're going to go to Acts 27, 2 Kings. You remember the story we always talk about? The woman who built the house for the man of God. She said, I perceive he's a holy man. What is your perception? See, you will never get more than your perception. In other words, if you think somebody shape, if you think somebody broke, for real, you just look at me like, Dad, they ain't got nothing. And you, and you got to go up there and ask him for something. You just say, well, just, you know, just, I, you say I was selling this, and these little things cost a little bit. They keep your ice in there. But let's say it was cost, you know, $50, something like that, 30 or $50. Wow. Say this thing. And I said, look at Preacher Russell. Well, I can't look at all that gold. If I look at Mayor... <laughs> I can't even do the illustration, darling, <laughs> blinging over him. But if I look at Mayor and I misunderstand, I think, well, Mayor, may, Mayor maybe, may, may, maybe Mayor doesn't have anything. I said, well, you know, Mayor, just, just give me $5. See? So, no, no you're not giving me a quick land. <laughs> so, watch. I, because I don't assume she can do any better, right. or I don't know her status, I only get $5 from somebody that could have easily given me. To Come on, y'all. So when you stand up, if I stand up, if all you're trying to do is just want to clap, you're going to miss it. But if you understand that I am not just standing here because I want to do something, but God chose me. Oh, God. He brought me from Germany. He carried me through hell and high water. He held me in the hottest part of the fire so I'd have a word. Oh, God. Y'all better leave me alone in here. So I would have what you need when you get in trouble. It don't make no difference how often we go get fish together. Or whether we go to Miss C and P's and eat, eat steak and rice and gravy. Don't get it twisted, baby. I'm a vessel of God. And if you don't know that, then you won't receive what you need. And revelation is how you're going to get through your season. Oh, God. Boy, that's good. Acts 27. Watch this. Beginning at verse 9 through 11. We got to hurry. 9 through 11. Acts 27, verse 9 through 11, and then 20 through 22. Now, when much time was spent, uh -huh. and when sailing was now dangerous because of the, uh, how fast, because minute, is that the fast King James? was now uh, already That's passed. King James? Yep. Oh, I was going to say, okay, all right. Paul admonished them. Paul admonished them. Come on. Yes. And said unto them, sirs, I perceive that... Stop. I'm sorry, Rev. See, you have to understand not just the power of God in the preaching moment. Oh, God. I don't know why God got me on this. You remember what's her name? I think her name was Ruth. They used to go to our church years, 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 years ago. See, you, you don't want to just think it's about, that's, it's about me putting on a robe and act, acting deep. The Holy Ghost that rests in the life of a vessel. Yes, sir. That ain't something I just put on when I hit the door. Yes, 
He just admonished him. This wasn't a formal service. You want to be able to be so respectful. Ain't nobody talking about idolizing. Y'all got more sense than that. I ain't got to worry about that. We're not talking about idolizing. But so respectful of your man or woman of God that even in a casual conversation, in a casual encounter, you don't hear what I'm telling you. Watch this. You can sneeze and somebody can say, God bless you. And that's proper and I think it's sweet. And I get it all. Except I know where it came from from way back when they thought you, you know, at your most vulnerable. They thought you were going to take in a demon. La, 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 la. It's still nice to do. But there's a difference between somebody saying, God bless you, and your man or woman of God saying, God bless you. Oh, oh, hallelujah. You better hear me. Paul just admonished them. And that's why some of them missed it. Listen. And said unto them, What did he say? Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. Now watch this. He didn't say, we shouldn't go. Uh-huh. He just said, I'm feeling in my spirit, y'all, this, this ain't going to be no joke right here. Uh-huh. Had they heard him properly. Uh-huh. See, until you identify that person yeah. in your life, that voice, you will hear what they say from God, I'm telling you, as a suggestion or an alternate, alternative perspective. You will miss the revelation in the moment. He said, I'm trying to tell y'all. Again, Paul, you know, everybody that's, that's a prophet don't go yay, yay, yay. Okay, I walk in fivefold. That's it. Not because I'm so deep. The Lord chose it. I don't know why he chose it. Because it looked like to me he'd have chose somebody, you know, smarter. You're probably not better looking, but smarter. You know what I'm saying? Something. But, I, but you understand, the apostolic being sent, breaking up ground, prophetic, speaking to nations, kings, giving wisdom to other leaders, all that's there. Pastor, I'm past that, McCoy, I've been a pastor. Pastor, teacher, evangelist, stirring up the surplus grace. The, pro- the prophet of God spoke to me even this past weekend and said, God called you to the global field, which has never been my passion, but, you know, I told the Lord this morning, whatever. Called you to the global field to stir up a balanced faith for surplus grace but watch this so they admonished and then he said I'm trying to tell y'all it's going to get ugly keep reading Um, and said unto them sirs I perceive that this voyage will will be with with hurt and much damage Mm. not only for the ladding and ship but also for our lives now if they had heard him right they could have said well now Paul what you think we ought to do because now if you think we ought to stay I'm I'm good with that (laughs) <laughs> well, anyway, read verse 20 through 22. Let's go on. <laughs> and when neither sun nor stars in many, many days, days appeared, appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. The storm was horrible. Come on. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Come on. But after long abstinence, Paul <laughs> stood forth in the midst of them and said. What did he say? Sirs, ye should have hearkened. You should have listened to what I told you. Yeah. And see, a lot of times God won't let us. He won't let us, watch this now, tell you exactly what you should do. He'll just let us admonish you and see what you do. Oh, God, this is, I thought I was going to have more hope right here. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, I just want to make you aware of this. I got to transition to the other part. 1 Samuel chapter 9. You make a note of verse 3 and then 16 through 20 when the prophet of God, Saul, was uh, still with his father and his father had some lost donkeys. And I always make the joke, King James said lost asses. And I always said, here Saul was supposed to be king and he chasing lost. Yeah, let's move on. You hear what I'm saying? No, that's still going on right now. People who God intended to be great around here chasing lost tail. That's right. It's so, it's so, it's so true. Don't act shocked. You watch TV. You hear way worse than that. Don't play me this morning. Are you understanding me? So here God has this great plan for this guy. He has low self-esteem, and he's going down trying to find his, his dad's donkeys. And so he walks up, and he's going out looking, and Saul sees him. Excuse me, Samuel sees him, and God says, this is the man that I'm going to use as king. Pick it up in verse 16. 
about this time, yes. I will send thee a man out yes. of the land of Benjamin. God's talking to the prophet. Go ahead. And thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel. Right. That he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. Mm. For I have looked upon my people. Yeah. Because their cry has come upon me. Yeah. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake to thee of. Good gracious. This shall... This same shall reign over my people. Yeah, now watch this. Verse 19, Samuel answered Saul, because Saul was like, you know, where is the seer's house? Saul wanted to know. See, he called him a what? A seer. What did he call him? A seer. He understood that God gave him insight and revelation. And so, verse 19, Samuel answered and said, I'm the seer. Here's what you need to do. You go up before me. You're going to eat with me today. Tomorrow, I'll let you go on back home, and I'm going to tell you all the stuff that's in your heart. And don't even worry about those donkeys. They've been found. we got bigger stuff to deal with. Yeah. <sighs> see, see, sometimes you need your, your, your set man to talk to you and say, look, all that stuff you fussing about, that's why people have a hard time. Uh-oh, God get me into a lot of stuff today. You don't want to get confused. Now, you know I'm huggy and kissy. That's the kind of person that I am. Okay. But it's not a lack of love. You said it Sunday. It's not a lack of love when we, people want to come talk and you want us to listen. I don't need to hear you recount the situation for 30 minutes. That's right. Amen. Generally, I can get the gist of what the issue is in the first two or three. But what we want to do is we want to just get it out. Amen. You don't just get it out with your man or woman of God. Amen. You get it out in prayer and with your best friend. Amen. Oh, God, I'm, I must be helping. Am I, you don't come to know what I'm just sitting there telling you know our long story. Amen. Because the Spirit of God starts speaking to us. Amen. The real issue is you've gotten too sensitive. You need to apologize to that one. And you need to so and so and so and so. And they'd be like, I took off work for five minutes. <laughs> It'd be the best five minutes of your life if you do what I tell you. Yeah. And you got time to stop by Chick-fil-A. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you're, but, it's a, but it's a different mindset here. It's a different mindset. When Elijah walked over to Elisha and threw his mantle on him, he was asking, stop everything you're doing. You don't want to miss, you don't want the preaching moment to be an entertainment moment. Amen. You, want to be, you want to recognize on my way in, God, I come to give you the glory. I come to give you praise and honor. I come to bring my gift, my offering, a tithe or whatever, and worship you with that. And God, I'm just so thankful. I believe you're getting ready to talk to me through my set man. You're going to challenge things in me that are dormant. You're going to comfort me in ways through that word. And when you get ready, and you say, I'm getting ready to get this word. Don't, don't ask me nothing else. You should have asked for gum while they were singing. And you get your mindset. It's word time now. It's word time. Because see, this is how I'm going to get my home put back together this is how I'm gonna get my finances back together this is how I'm gonna move into the next realm of ministry I want to be fulfilled in this life I got to hear this word that's my pastor up there we don't have to be the prettiest we don't have to be the smoothest but you know when your leaders talking let me tell you something I give you this and I'm gonna move to the ministry of the Holy Spirit when I first saw a picture of my birth mother I said no I know that can't be her I, yeah, I saw her picture. I was, no, that, that, I don't believe that's her right there. No, that can't, no. I looked and said, no, I don't believe that. Mm -mm. When I heard her voice on that phone, she didn't even speak English. I heard her voice. Yeah. Oh, you don't hear, God of mo. Watch this. I ain't even got to be preaching on the thing that you wanted to hear about that day. But just hearing the voice of your leader, you hear God. And it does something in your soul, doesn't it? She, I just, all I heard was, Rosemary. Oh, snap. That's what exactly what I said. Darn, that's my mama right there. No doubt about it. Never got a chance to touch her hand. She gone on. I'll see her later. I made sure she was saved. I sent somebody to the house in Germany. <laughs> You're going to be saved. <laughs> but let me not tell you, I knew that was my mom. Shepherd has a voice that touches something in your heart. Ain't nothing, oh, you hear other people, oh, God, they preach. Oh, my God. 
Love it. It was amazing. But that's, that's, not, that's not the same voice. And God will knit your heart to your past. Oh, God. So that's a, that's a, that's a way that revelation flows. Okay, y'all good? Okay, I got, to, I got to move now to this next thing. Revelation is a tool to get you and cause you to triumph. So one of the ways that revelation comes is through your set man or woman of God. Amen? But another way, God, is through the intimate relationship that you develop with Holy Spirit. Appreciate them three claps. Listen to me carefully. This, I don't, I told, I told Pastor Hutch, we were talking some, uh, some weeks ago. I want to, I almost want to just do that for the rest of the year. The ministry of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit is so critical. Yeah. Because you and I need his nudgings, his enlightenment yeah. in our lives yeah. if we're going to break through that wall that's in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. See, because the Holy Spirit. Is the, give me Acts 1 and 8. Is the power of God. Now, Rev, you made a statement, and I'm going to make it mine. I'm going to give you some money when uh, Brenton gives me the money he owes me. I'm going to give you that money. The only word that works is the word you do. God. When I tell you that's a mouthful, the only word that works is the word you do. If you don't do that word, you hear, okay, this is the wisdom of God. Doc, this is how you talk to your wife. This is the kind of things you need to start doing. You need to set you aside a night or two, and that's y'all's night. Then you need to go be around other couples. She need to know that you're proud to be with her in public. You hear that word. Now, you hear it, and you connect, because that's my set. That's my pastor right there. That's my set. Man, God talking to me. So everybody else can hear it as a suggestion. I ain't got nothing to do with them. I'm getting ready to take this home and do it. Yeah. You'll start noticing walls falling down. Yeah. Come on. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody been to Jericho recently. Yeah. But folk live in Jericho right now. Right. The word to get your walls down is in our mouth. Amen. You just got to hear that thing. Now watch this. Acts 1 and 8. You cannot underestimate the role of Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Acts 1 verse 8. Come on. But you shall receive power. Is this too much Bible study? No. Oh, okay, go ahead. They were saying slow. But ye shall receive power. Yeah. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, Samaria. And, and unto, unto the, the uttermost parts, parts of, of the earth. earth. Now, remember, remember, remember that he had already given them power in Luke chapter 9, verse 1. He had given them power to cure diseases, in other words, for those things that came against their body. He had given them power. Yeah. Remember Luke 9, 1. Right. He had given them power over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. What? Yeah. Over what? All the power of the enemy. He had already given them that. Then in John chapter 20, verse 22, he had said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. He gave them power again and said, receive power. That was power to handle church discipline. These are the disciples. Church discipline issues. He said, whoever sins, you remit, they remit it. And if you hold, they hold. He said, so you have some authority in the kingdom and the preacher's word. Well, then the same question, if he's talking to the same people, what kind of power is this? Same people. Okay, so we can find out what kind of power it is by looking at the purpose he gave it. But ye shall receive power. Okay, but ye shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Okay, well, it's got to mean more than just telling what you've seen and heard, because they've been doing that for two and a half years. Why would I need more power to do what I've been doing? Okay, so the word you already know, I teach you this, I'm going to teach it again. I'm going to teach it over and over again until you can quote it. You can preach it better than me. All right? He says the word witness there is the word martus, which means martyr, where we get the word martyr. So the Acts 1 and 8 power, being filled with the Holy Spirit, is so that God can give me power over me. Y'all better come on, talk to me. Because if you get a hold of this one, you can run. The Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 
So what that says to me is the only person that can stop me from doing the will of God, receiving the will of God, and flowing in the will of God, it ain't the devil, it ain't the folks that don't like you, it ain't the folk that talk junk. The only person that can stop me is To have power from God yes. to deal with myself. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, Rev. I don't know that we've spent time and investigated. I don't think we've investigated the depth of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Because, yeah, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah, you get a prayer. I get it. You get speaking other tongues as the Spirit gives you utter. Ain't nothing spooky or strange. Who got serious radio in your car? Them stations are flowing the whole time. They're always up there. But you couldn't hear it till you got that thing installed. Once it's installed, watch this. Watch this. If you don't cut it on, even though it's there and installed, you won't hear nothing. You don't hear me? But if you cut the thing, you'll hear a sound from heaven. Oh, God, you better hear me. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Amory, is the key to dealing with myself. Because there are times when my flesh, there are times when my attitude, you know what I'm saying? There are times when God is telling me, moving, prompting me to do something, and I am the hindrance. So he gave us the Holy Spirit power. So Holy Spirit, I welcome you. What's that song I was telling? Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Something like that. Here, come something floods my heart and fill this atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, see. I always say, overflow or fill me, Lord. I've been making songs up as I go. I just make them up as I go, my birth. But this is what I understand. See, watch this. Sneak over, Rev. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Sneak over to Jude, verse 20. Jude, it's right before Revelation. See, and it's so easy for us because we want to work hard. We want to do what we're supposed to do. We start think Jude verse 20, the book right before Revelation. We start thinking, okay, I know I need to do this. I know I need to do it. And then we start struggling because we can't find the wherewithal in us. How many ever known what you should do and just too worsome and hard-headed and foolish acting to do it? Oh, God, let me put, let me do this right here. You understand what I'm saying? So Holy Spirit has been given to us. To Miss Benet just prod us and prick us and say, "Come on now, come on now." You, kn- that's it. Read it. Look at Jude verse twenty. Read that, Rev. But ye beloved, yeah. building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So watch this. Watch this. See, see, I'm telling you. When, watch this. We always you think you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and we always think the gifts of the Spirit and binding and casting out demons. All oh, that's good. But I want, I'm going to show you, we're going to run out of time today, but I'm going to show you in, this, in these days to come, the ministry of Holy Spirit is more about getting us together than anything out there. Mm-hmm. The Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're what? Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. All, watch what he said. The weapons I gave you are to deal with your own mind. That's the Rosie O'Neill translation. All the way, all these supernatural mighty through God weapons or to help you deal with your mind. Amen. 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 And while and I ain't mad at nobody, thank God for our intercessors and people binding up the demons in the eastern part of the state and all that kind of stuff. But hear me when I tell you, we've been filled, or if you've not been filled, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let God fill you. Begin to have a prayer language that God gives you, a language of prayer and praise. Your mind don't even understand it because it's got to work on your mind. You see what I'm saying? But that's been given to us. It says, because I need to build myself on my most holy faith. But look at this next verse. I'm telling you, I don't know if we notice it. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Watch this. 
I can't keep myself in the love of God if I ain't praying in the Holy Ghost and building up my most holy faith. Because if I don't build up my faith, you get on my nerves. I'm cussing you out. Amen. That's just, I'm just talk about it. I'm going to get so angry. So the reason, and you know it's got to be a connection to faith. Because remember the disciples, how often should we forgive a people? Didn't you just bring this up? How often should we forgive? Seven times in a day. He said, no, seven times 70. They said, you're going to have to increase my faith. To keep me in the love of God, I got to walk by faith. Yes. To maintain a loving relationship with people that let you down, you got to walk by faith. Yes. Yeah, in order to still feel good about who you are, what God's called you to do, when you have to deal with some people who look at you like you're a nut, you're going to have to walk by faith. Okay? Because that's the only thing that can keep you in the love of God. When I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit is getting, he's getting a grip. I always look at stuff visually. This is just my way of understanding. The more I pray in the Holy Ghost, it's like the more spinach Popeye ate. All right. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know what I'm saying. That sounds silly to me. Now, Preacher Russell was the one that interpreted, uh, what was it? Uh, Patty LaBelle, Vulu, Vuvu, Say I, Siswa. Now, I sung that song for years, didn't know what it meant until about five years ago when Preacher Russell said, You know what she's saying? Something like, Do you want to stay with me tonight? I said, What? Sleep with me? Oh, excuse me. I didn't know that what she was saying. I was steady. You know what I'm saying? I'm going in. I didn't even know what the song meant. But isn't it funny how then when the Lord wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit, then we got all these issues. But well, what am I saying? I don't want, that don't, that don't sound right. I was singing and dancing, had a ball. Now let's sing, pray in the Holy Ghost and have a victory. Yeah. Oh my God, this is good. This is good. All right. Get me Romans 8. Get me Romans 8. So, Holy Spirit, as it being filled with the Holy Spirit, so I said, Holy Spirit, and, you know, I want you to fill me. I know I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior, but, and I know you are a part of who I am because the Holy Spirit changes our DNA, Romans 8, 26. Uh, so, but Holy Spirit, I want to be filled to overflowing. Like I saw in the book of Acts, they said, in one place, they said, have y'all been filled? They said, we haven't even heard of that. What is that? <laughs> I love honesty. He said, oh, yeah, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says they, they received that. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with tongues and glorify God. Nothing spooky, nothing strange. Just like charging my phone. Yeah. Eating spinach. Uh -huh. So the Holy Spirit can get a grip on this flesh. And sometimes, sometimes when you're really tired, too much come out your mouth. Amen. Thank you, dog. Thank you. I just, when I tell you, man, I appreciate it so much. Yeah, sometimes your mouth just runs, just seem like you get loose. Oh, no. I'm, I, I want to be holy for God. I want to be a holy vessel for God. And I can't do that by myself. Uh-oh. Now, I can, do, I can do halfway decent, but that's only halfway. Because everybody in here, I know y'all looking at me right strange. I don't know what's going on. But everybody in here got something that makes your knees get weak. It may not be the same thing, but everybody in here got something. That's why we need Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill me. Watch this. Romans 8, 26. I'm trying to tell you, believers, I don't, I don't think we get it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The Holy Spirit does what, Rev? Helpeth our Helps infirmities. Helps what? Our infirmities. He said, I, we're not trying to rebuild Washington right now, though it is in desperate need of rebuilding. So that ain't what we're talking about right now. Holy Spirit helps my infirmities, Amen. helps my weak places. Yeah. My birth, you, you can help me with this. When a person, I've had one, it didn't hurt because I was still numb from the C-sections. But they tell me a hernia is when something has maybe ballooned out. It's not strong. And so it bulges out under pressure. Y'all maybe seen, you ever had a balloon and you twisted it and it bubbled out? Do you understand? Well, you know the part that bubbled out pops easier. Yeah. Holy Spirit helps where I'm thin and where I've bubbled out, where I'm susceptible to weakness. He, he, he knows. Holy Spirit knows where I've been. He knows the stuff that got me back in the day. You understand what I'm saying? He knows where I have a tendency to get a little weak. So if I ask, oh God, if I what? Ask him. Here's the thing the Lord showed me, and we're going to have to, gosh, time just flies. 
He says, most people think they're depending on the Holy Spirit. But there's a difference between acknowledging need and being dependent. See, I can say, I know I need him. I got I know I need him. And I do. <laughs> and you know we say that. But it's a difference where I know I need to drink more water. And you've been seven, eight days, you still ain't had none. You acknowledge the need, but you ain't serious about it. It's a difference between drink another soda, your behind gonna drop dead. If you don't get a certain amount of water in, your kidneys are gonna stop, and you're going down. Then all of a sudden, now I'm dependent on water. All right, amen. Now, that was just an example. Ain't nothing wrong with my kidneys. I don't want y'all to be nervous. But I am trying to drink more water. So you're almost always going to see me. The whole time I was in Charleston, everywhere I went. And two, I'm getting funny. I don't like touching wet glass. Like in restaurants, they sweat. I'm, I got, I, maybe I caught OCD. Can you catch that? I don't know. But my children say I caught it. But now I'm dependent on it. I don't feel like I can go with it. When I feel like I can't go without it, I start making provision. Right. When I feel like I can't, 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 can't be without his presence, I'm asking him, oh, Holy Spirit, I need your help to do this. Yeah. Do you all know how long uh, I would get up, how many years I would get up to preach and hadn't really besought the Holy Spirit? Because I thought, because I had studied. Right. But what I'm realizing in this season, you ain't dealing with normal stuff here. Amen. You better have the Holy Spirit in your life. People can sit right up in church and hear you and walk right out and shoot up a place. We need another level of anointing. So I'm saying, Holy Spirit, I need you. And it ain't just I acknowledge, but here I'm coming to the well. I'm coming to you at every situation and I'm stopping and I'm saying, Holy Spirit, show me what I need to do. Reveal to me where I'm weak. Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is sharp, quick, and powerful. Sharpening to a sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Holy Spirit, I understand that you can show me when my heart is lying to me. Because the heart does lie. Jeremiah said that thing is desperately wicked. You can't trust it all the time. Some stuff you love, it's killing you. You, don't, you can't trust that. Holy Spirit, help me to see. You, you move upon the face of my darkness and my water. Divide light from darkness. Show me what's really right. Show me what. In this situation, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? I'm in a room where there don't seem to be any wall, any doors, and, and there are snakes on fire behind me. Holy Spirit, you know both what I'm in. Go to 1 Corinthians. I got one more minute. Oh, Lord, I got three minutes. I got to give it to you. Oh, we ain't through. We're going to just, we're going to, oh. We need revelation. It's a tool. It's a tool. Revelation is a tool. He'll tell you, don't say it like that. Come at them like this here. And you get a whole other response. What, the first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9? Yes, indeed. I can't read 7 and 8. They start shouting and hollering. We don't have time. You sure? I, I, I'm uh, going to read 9 then. Just 9? Yeah, going to read 9. But as it is written... Mm. And then he, see how he read it. He trying to get a shout. But as it is written. <laughs> I have not seen. Come on. Nor ear heard. Come on. Neither have entered into the heart of man. What? The things which God hath prepared for them so, that love him. So in other words, there's some things. Not just heaven, but thank God for heaven. Okay, two yeses. Thank God that when I close my eyes on this side, I will open them in the presence of God. Grace never fails, people. It's true. Say, if it weren't so, I, I would have told you. I ain't got no reason to lie to you. So I don't owe you jack. So if I promised it to you, it's because I want to give it to you. He said, so there are things that God has prepared both in eternity and time that I can't see with my natural eye. And if I can't see it, I don't know to go after it. Come on, keep reading. But! 
But God hath revealed them unto us. How did he reveal them? How, what's he want to do when it? God is what? Revealed. He's what? That's what you need when you get in trouble. You need a revelation. Amen. When you are standing in something, someone said, well, just walk off. It don't look like it's going to work for you. You need to stop right there and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Holy, Holy Spirit, speak to me right now. You stand right there. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to be all loud and start spinning and knock nobody down. Be Stand there like you got some sense. Amen. Amen. And just let the Holy Spirit just pray. Just pray. So Holy Spirit revealed to me what's going on because I believe you got something for me in this situation and I don't see it and they clowning, but I'm not looking in the flesh. I'm going to keep my eye on him who is invisible. Holy Spirit, download to me what you want me to have. Show it to me. Oh, God. Whoa. You better hear me. But God has revealed it unto us. How? By his spirit. Come on. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yeah. Yea, the deep things of God. Keep going. Hurry. For what man knoweth the things of a man, right. save the spirit of man which is in him. Come on. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. He said, let me tell you something. There are a whole bunch of stuff that you don't know and folk don't know, but I know. I know what's in you. I know what God wants to do through you. I know what's for you. Can I just tell you there's some stuff for you that you don't know about? You need to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You just say, Holy Spirit, show me today what you have for me. Open my eyes so I can behold wondrous things out of your law. As I'm walking through the day, bring up some. I'm telling y'all, oh God, I can't get on surplus grace right now. Now, but it's the Holy Spirit that can tell you to do something. You're not even thinking about it. Man, the whole way I got into building stuff was trying to help somebody else not lose such an opportunity. But it was the Holy Spirit. Come on, give me the last verse. Rev, y'all, they stand there waiting to receive offering. Okay. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Come on. But the spirit which is of God. Thank you, Jesus. That we might know. Stop. We receive the Spirit of God that we might know. We receive the Spirit of God that we might know. God said, I don't want you living not knowing what I have for you. He said, I'm going to give you my spirit so you can know the stuff that's freely given to you. So that when you get in a situation and look like ain't no way to have peace, you say, devil, I know you a lie. There's some peace in this thing for me. Holy Spirit, show me how to get to my peace. He's a revealer and revelation is a tool. Well, we got to stop today. Boy, that's good. Isn't that good? Yeah. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for blessing us with your word today. Holy Spirit, we just yield to you. We thank you because we want to we want to live out a true dependence on you. We are. We really do need you like that. But we want to live it out. And Lord, if there are those that have not been filled with the Holy with the Holy Spirit, Father, I pray that you would just convict their hearts, that they would open up and begin to reach out for you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for filling them. We believe that they will be filled to overflowing with their own prayer language. And Father, we thank you that we have prayer ministers that are available. And Lord, they can begin studying the scripture. But God, I just thank you right now because we don't want to get so newfangled in this new day that we forget the power comes from the Holy Ghost. We don't want to get so technical that we forget there's power to deal with situations. Holy Spirit, you give us power. And we thank you that we can exercise it on ourselves to keep ourselves in your love and in the right way. Bless us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How many blessed folk in this house? I dare you just spend a second in love on God for that word. Yeah, don't take your set man for... Don't take your set man for granted. God will give revelation through him. And develop that relationship with Holy Spirit. And the more you develop it, I'm telling you, you're going to sense the movement of God.